How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Creators Process. Uh, my name is Jaden. Right next to me I have Nathan. How are you doing today, man? I'm good, Jaden. Oh, that's uh, good. That's good, and I'm pretty good, thank you. And uh, so tell me a bit about yourself. What do you what do you do with yourself? What do I do? What do I do? Um, I work in, uh, I'm an executive officer, so I work in uh, admin, admin and project management, um, but I used to be a high school teacher. Yeah. High school English and literature, yeah. Um, and uh, I, in between those kind of careers, I, I, I became an artist as well. Oh, awesome, man. How long ago did you uh, come start doing art? Like, how long did you start um, doing that? I, I suppose I, I've, I've always been drawing since I was a little kid, um, yeah. but um, uh, when I became a teacher I stopped drawing and all my creative process and energy kind of got poured into that I was just yeah. too exhausted. Um, and then uh, it wasn't until I, I left that career um, and um, I needed to get some headspace, so uh, I, I, I really, really struggled to sit still really struggled to sit still and to have a quiet mind so um one day I just picked up a, a, pen, a, a pencil and a pad again and just started drawing and um, before I knew it I had been sitting there for three hours quiet and peaceful and, and then um, I was like wow I need to do more of this um, <laughs> so uh, I just I, I kept doing that and um, really just for some headspace and, and for some mental health and um, yeah. someone noticed I uh, noticed my stuff and I was posting it up and they said, um, hey, I, I've, got a, I've, got a, I've got a space you can use uh, if you want to have an ex exhibition and um, I'll connect you with a curator and she can uh, mentor you and, um, and, uh, and work with you to put something together. And um, not being one to turn down an opportunity, I, I said, sure, let's do it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it just kind of went from there, it just snowballed from there. and. Um, yeah, so I've been doing that for, um, oh, I've been working as an artist for about four years now. Oh, awesome. No, that's really awesome, man. And it's, it's, it's really interesting how you said that, like, when you were, because, like, I, um, you know, I come from a family of teachers, and they also say, like, so much of their energy is put into, obviously, teaching, because, you know, you have to set up, obviously, the schedule and, you know, timetable and all that, and so you just don't have time for anything else, and it's like, I like how, um, when yeah you said that after you stepped away from that it then came back like that creativity just came flying back in and all that because it was just like you know just waiting inside going hey don't forget about me and then <laughs> you know the, the one opportunity that comes out and you know you start you stop doing everything else there just it just goes hey so what are we doing now yeah 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 well, it was yeah teaching was um a huge part of that process it's just uh, it's a big like creative component to that whole career and um, so much creative energy got poured into that. There wasn't much left over at the end. <laughs> you were left, uh, so you were yeah. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, when, when I finally had some, some capacity and some um, refilled my jelly bean jar of, <laughs> of creativity and, and, I love and, that. and goodness, um, I uh, yeah, was, able to, was able to just kind of sit down and do it again. That's awesome, man. You know, like, I feel like uh, I've, when I've been talking to so many people, they say that creativity, people who do creative stuff, like, even if they take a break from it, it's always there. Mm. Like, so, like, when they yeah. revisit it, it, it just never leaves you. It's like, you know, something that just sticks within someone for a long time, even if, like, you know, I've had, heard stories of people taking, like, a 10-year gap. Mm. And then they go back to it, and they, you know, it's still there. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting. So it seems like like for you that, you know, it's always been there. But then you know, obviously you took a bit of a break in between, and then it came back after you know you could focus on it. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think um, I don't think it, it ever left uh, or that it came back. It's oh, just that the um, the. The things I was creating weren't um, visual artworks. They were, okay. they were. I was creating other stuff. And like I think, um, as humans, like we're ingrained to create, and we're ingrained to tell stories, and we're ingrained to um, to to just create things. Um, and uh, so, like I might have, no matter what kind of job I do, or if I'm studying, or whatever it is I'm studying, I find um, I'm still creating things. They might not be visual. 
and they might not be um, artistic in a sensory sense, but um, they, they're still creations. And I find everybody does that. Yeah. I find everybody does that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's interesting, man. And it's like, uh, so what are some of the uh, mediums you work in? So what are some of the materials you use to create? Um, so I am one of those people that just pick something up and just <laughs> run with it for a while and Fair obsessively enough. and go, right, let's learn how to do this. Um, so I originally started with, um, with just pencils, pencils and um, some soft pastels just because, you know, like, um, it's a good place to start. Um, it's start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I like drawing mediums and I very much love mess <laughs> uh, on the paper. I very much enjoy yeah. mess on the paper. Um, I'm a bit of a niche freak, but I really enjoy mess on the paper. <laughs> uh, so I really liked pencils and soft pastels and just getting in there with my hands and being tactile. So I started with that, um, learned some great techniques and things like that along the way and some structure and, and um, dimensions and all that kind of they really good foundational stuff. Mm. Um, uh, I was once told. I was once told um, you've got to you've got to learn all the rules before you can break them. So I was. That's I, an interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of get that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I spent yeah. some time learning the rules, um, and uh, and then I moved away from pencils and, and soft pastels, and I, I thought let's give watercolor a crack. Picked up the watercolors. Um, and uh, uh, I loved them. I absolutely loved them. I love how um, I love how free and intuitive they are, and they just. They're, I find um, when you, I don't know. I find like with the watercolors, um, a lot of people really, really find them frustrating, and mm. I just love them. I just uh, I like to let them do what they want to do. Yeah, because they kind of have a bit of a mind of their own. They absolutely yeah. do. Yeah, like I can do. like nudge them a little bit, but. Um, I, I, you can control them. You can control yes. them, but um, but I really, really love just letting them be like herding cats and just let them do what they want to do. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. Like, I think it's interesting because, like, you know, obviously, because uh, it's a very runny substance, mm. and so obviously when you apply it, it kind of just drips down. Yeah. And so and that is actually part of like what makes watercolor very different to other mediums is like when you apply on the paper, like whatever you put on there mm. it's just it's just there like yeah. if you just do a spot it's just a spot but then when you do watercolor it's like a spot and then it drips down <laughs> you know so it, it, it does have its own mind going nope I'm gonna go down yeah yeah uh, they're so <laughs> versatile though like mm. you can they just create the most um this this huge spectrum of finishes like you you, you do like you've got your drips and your bleeds and mm. and um and just these wonderful flowy gradients that just happen <laughs> um, and but then you've got this really really refined controlled process where you can create just such visually realistic magical works oh, um absolutely but uh but yeah like I, they're so they're so wonderful um yeah so i wanted to learn all of those um and i played with them for a long time i really really enjoyed them then i was like all right cool done with that let's uh what's next and um next I, in line, yeah, next in line I, I, I picked up acrylics and I, I just wanted to learn how to paint with acrylics and then i and then I picked up oil paints and I wanted to learn those and um, and I just ran with them for a little while. Um, and more recently I've been working with charcoals, um, yeah. which has been so much fun. Yeah. So much fun. They just, uh, um, I'm, I, feel, I feel a little bit, I, I, I just get to be back in that mess and I get to be messy and I get to touch and I get to yeah. smudge and go wild and I'm, I'm very much, I very much enjoy being an emotive kind of energetic artist um, okay, yeah. and charcoals allow me to do that. Um, but yeah. So it's kind of like you put your, how you feel and your raw emotion onto the canvas, you know, and you feel like, you know, you make this inner, like this mess of the thing and it's kind of like portraying your raw emotions onto the canvas in a way. Yeah, it's very freeing. Like, yeah. I, I've tried going in with a plan, um, and, <laughs> um, and I've tried, um, I hate, I used to do a lot of commissions. I really, really don't enjoy them. But I find that when I go back to, 
When I go back to the core reason why I started drawing, I love the process, and um, and you know the core reason was you know for my mental health and for um, mm -hmm. and for me to be able to focus and um, be mindful and meditate while doing and it's I've sort of returned back to that and it's very much this process of um, oh this is um, this is what's going on for me this is how I'm feeling okay all right cool yeah. I'm gonna put the charcoals down yeah. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> time for a break <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah no, I think I can kind of get that because I guess with commission work you were you kind of in a way like you're told you know this is what I want and all that sort of thing so it's like what other people want but then it sounds like for you art is like therapeutic to the point where it's like if you're not doing something that represents you then you don't feel connected to it in a way yeah I just um I just want to do it because I enjoy it yeah and no, because it makes absolutely. me happy um I've done it uh, sometimes the commission stuff can be fun it can be it can be fun it, um, can, be. We, it can be fun um Freedom, freedom, freedom with it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, being boxed in, being boxed into it, this is, this and this and this and this and this, I find so stressful. But yeah, so, um, yeah, I mostly, I mostly just do it now because I enjoy it. And if, if I end up putting a show together or if I end up selling something, it's usually just, oh, cool. <laughs> Thank <you. laughs> Thanks. <laughs> No, it's like it. I did a thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it sounds like you don't like when you've tried out all these mediums that you don't restrict yourself. Like you actually don't like just stick to the one thing. Mm -hmm. And because I know that like there are some people that do kind of like stay in that little box because they're like, oh, this is the safe thing to do. But it seems like with you, you're like, nope, what's the next thing? You know, what's the next big thing that I can do? Yeah. And I definitely think it's important for like even for me as a photographer and an artist to not restrict yourself like from doing trying something different because mm. I guess the worst that can happen is it doesn't work oh, that's, that's the best thing that yeah, can happen like, <laughs> that's the best thing that can happen <laughs> I love when it doesn't work um, I learn so much mm. I learn so so much um, when it fucks up <laughs> like I learned. Well, you know, as they say, you learn from failure, not from success. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. Well, I, yeah, like it's um, it's wonderful. I really enjoy <laughs> it. Um, I fail far more often than I succeed, and um, and uh, and there and there's and there's such wonderful learning experiences, and they they usually drive me harder to learn and harder to seek techniques and tools and styles and it drives me harder to look at what other people are doing and it drives me harder to to find out how they did it and yeah and like that's very much how I treat all, all of them um like they're very they're for my mental health and yeah. just you know to do them but they're also these really enriching learning experiences absolutely yeah yeah that's amazing man and so like what are some of the uh, I guess the so I guess you know how you say that you do this like for your mental health and all that sort of thing. It's a main, a lot of fits, you know, just for your health to, you know, release that energy and all that sort of mm. thing. Are there specific themes you focus on? Like, you know, like when you paint your portraits, or do you have a uh, specific idea in mind or do you just kind of, I think you said before, you just like to go in just not with a specific idea. Or yeah, I, um, I... What tends to happen is, um, so I, I'm always engaged in what other artists are doing. I'm always looking at what other people are doing constantly. And I, I like to scrapbook and save things that I, I really like. I go, wow, you know, like, I love that colour combination. Or I love that, I love that, sh um, that contrast in shading. Or I love that line. Or I love it. Like, there's always an aspect of, of other people's work that I just I really, really love and I want to try. Mm -hmm. um, so often when I'm going in to, to do an artwork, it's usually, not so much with a plan, but it's usually to explore um, a car, those things. Like it's usually because I want to I wanna see if I can do that colour combination or what, what is it going to look like if I use that colour combination? What's it going to look like if I try that line work? Or I really love those brush strokes. I want to try those myself. Um, mm -hmm. With in terms of like of why I might choose a subject or anything, I mostly do portraiture. 
Mm. Oh, mostly. I only do porch town. <laughs> <laughs> mostly. Oh, There's a lot of faces in this room right yeah. now. Um, Just a lot of <laughs> um, I sometimes have done. Um, I've sometimes done nudes and form and. Um, I just don't enjoy them as much as I enjoy portraiture. I, there's, there's, I've always been really, really connected to faces. Um, I've always, um, you know, like, uh, that's like our first point of communication. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's our first point of communication. It's our first point of connection. It's our first point of, um, of empathy and, and, mm. um, and expression. And I just, I love faces. So when I'm going in to do a piece of work, it's usually one, I want to practice a medium. I want to practice a technique and I want to work with a particular expression or, mm. or person. Um, and the, the reason I might choose them is because, um, of the expression itself or, or the character in the face. Mm -hmm. Um, or I'm really, really fascinated with one thing I really, really love is um, playing with light and dark. Yeah. Uh, light and dark and mood. Uh, there's often, um, yeah, just these undertones of, of expression too, where like there might hmm. be one expression there in the eyes, but the mouth might tell a different story. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I really enjoy that. So I, I come, in, I usually come into a piece of work with kind of those things in mind. More so than a plan or anything. <laughs> Fair enough, and I think you're, you're definitely right with saying this. Like, as when we meet as people, it's the first thing you know we look at. We look at each other's faces, and we kind of we get an idea of that person because you can tell a lot by someone's like expression, by how they're feeling, and yeah, like it's actually quite an interesting feature that you know a lot of people. You know, they say body language, and it's like, well, yeah, body language is one thing, but then the one thing you can kind of tell from someone, how they're feeling is by their face, you mm. know? And it's, uh, I think I was talking to another artist who uh, actually enjoys doing portrait because they say the same thing. It's like, you tell a lot by s someone by just their face, you know? Their expressions, their, you know, you can tell if, you know, sometimes you can see, like, hurt in the, their eyes, their, the trauma, and, like, you can see, it, you can tell a lot of different stories from just looking mm. at someone, you know, and it's just, it is a really interesting and it, I can definitely understand where you're coming from where, why you might be interested in just focusing on just the face itself. Mm. You can just tell a lot of stories through it. Yeah, I, I just, I really enjoy them. Um, and it's something I really, really enjoy too is that um, there's very much this voyeuristic component to, to art. Uh, especially with portraiture and, um, and particularly nudes and, and form, it's um, it's so voyeuristic. Um, so I also really enjoy drawing or painting a portrait where the subject is looking directly at the um, at the viewer. Oh, okay. Uh, and breaking that kind of removed voyeurism. Voyeurism. It's uh, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. You're looking yeah. right at me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, no, I get that, because it's like when you go to, like, you know, a, a gallery and there's, like, a painting or a portrait, and the person's looking directly at you, mm. it's like, you're, it's a, like, it, I remember, like, hearing an art talk about it going, like, you know, when there's a portrait that is looking at you, you know, it's like, instead of you looking at the portrait, it's like the portrait's looking at you, so you're kind of having that eye contact with the artwork itself, yeah. and so you kind of feel in a way that you're being observed and sometimes as you say like it might feel a bit uncomfortable for some people or it might just feel like you're thinking like you're getting to the mind of what the person might be thinking while you're looking at you know it's mm. like it, it creates this whole different story and timeline to you know when you look at a portrait where someone's not looking because mm. then you know like it's it's really interesting and it's yeah. like it creates a bit of a interesting uh, <laughs> feeling when yeah. you're like observing some like a portrait of someone that is looking right at you yeah well there's a relationship like, there yeah it's a relationship when you're just viewing an artwork you are you're just the viewer and um and i don't know I, the artwork might bring stuff up for you and 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 tell a story for you but um but i think when um when a portrait is looking directly at you, all of a sudden, it's not just about you, it's a relationship all of a sudden. Yeah, a relationship between the viewer and 
the portrait. Yeah, you know, and, and the artist as well. Because yeah, it's like the artist is inviting, <laughs> in a, a way, inviting the person in the painting to observe the viewer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely. Like, and it's, it's, it's really interesting and like, you know, I've seen some amazing portraiture where like people have captured just people looking directly at the camera and you just like some of these portraits I'm just kind of like you just you're just left speechless you're just mm. like and then you kind of go why am I so speechless and then it's like well, well maybe it's because they're looking directly yeah. back at me you're and entirely engaged yeah. in a conversation exactly. in a dialogue with this piece of work <laughs> exactly and it's like I think maybe it's just like a human connection where people a lot of like sometimes like I've talked to people and kind of they say oh well you know I didn't feel comfortable talking to this person because they didn't like you know they didn't give me that eye contact of going like you know they didn't look directly at me yeah you know and so you just kind of feel like a little bit like just I don't know, it's it's a it's a weird way of saying kind of like it's a human connection like you know it's good that when you're able to look directly at someone because it's you know it, you're giving them your attention you know mm -hmm. you're giving them your time and you know it shows that you're making an effort to communicate with them because you know sometimes people just kind of like when you're talking to them they're just kind of like you know, you know <laughs> yeah. just kind of like, they're just like you can they're tell elsewhere. Like, oh, yeah. you know that's yeah. really interesting in this but you, you know what i mean and so it's yeah. like there's a lot of uh feeling that goes into when you give that person that time of day just to even look directly at them mm. because it shows that you're listening yeah, yeah. And, and I think yeah it's definitely it does definitely tell a lot from just yeah the the human interaction yeah, yeah. And now I do really love like you know when I was looking at these amazing charcoal images that are on the side of us right now just yeah like I, the one of the male that's right up there the left is you can just see a lot of just pain and all that sort of thing but then it's like they're looking right at you so it's kind of like they're inviting you to in a way feel the pain that they're feeling at the time and it's just yeah like I, when I, I as I said when I first came in I just stared at that portrait and yeah just so I I just didn't know what to say I was kind of like just speechless for a moment just going like oh my gosh like what what happened you know you just kind of go like what happened you know <laughs> what's wrong with you Nathan yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you all right <laughs> um but no, to call you someone <laughs> uh yeah so I need a you know <laughs> um, oh gosh but yeah no, no I, I I yeah um I don't know like uh I really like, like I said, like, I really love that, um, the eyes can say one thing, but, and the mouth can say another when they're complete, oh. when you only look at them separately and you put them together and they start telling this really different story. Um, and like, there Definitely. might be, there might be tears in the eyes, but there's a slight curve in the mouth as well. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's a slight smile in the face of pain and, mm, that's it. um, there's always more underneath that, that surface layer of the face too. Uh, it's very much been my experience. Um, you know, there's always so much more going on upstairs than, yeah. <laughs> than is often yeah. on my face. <laughs> so, um, so I, I, I enjoy that too. Um, yeah. Yeah. But you're definitely right because like sometimes it, it can be like, I remember seeing this experiment someone did where they just showed eyes. So mm. there was nothing else, it just showed the eyes and you had to guess what that expression someone might have been doing in the eyes. But then you might say one thing and then they go, oh, they look happy. And then it's like the opposite going, no, actually this person was sad. And it's like, oh, you know, because yeah. like you can't just really tell sometimes because as you said, like the eyes might be doing one thing, but then under here is completely different, you know, yeah. and so it's, it's like, it really is interesting because like, there's a big it, story there. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. no, I think that's really fascinating. And I definitely do see that in like, you know, in the portrait, the eyes are obviously portraying sadness, but then uh, when you look a little bit down, like the mouth is just in a way kind of very neutral, mm. like it's just a very neutral kind of just like a, a pondering a uh, pondering expression but it's just it's really interesting it, it's it's I really love it it's a beautiful artwork thank you and it's okay and uh, so I'll ask you this as a final question do you have any upcoming exhibitions or projects that you're working on like what is uh, 
Oh, what does um, the future hold? <laughs> what does the future hold? Um, I'm very much wanting to do continue playing with these charcoals. Um, I'm just I'm really enjoying them so much um, and how expressive they are. I would love to have a show probably next year. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm currently talking with someone about putting one together. Um, awesome. But uh, yeah, we're going to revisit that um, probably middle of the year. Yeah, that's kind of it at the moment. I'm. I'm I'm <laughs> trying to juggle like uh, being an artist and um, and, a, and a full time career and social life and everything. Oh, oh absolutely! A lot, it's a lot of balls in the air. Yes, um, I'm le I've learned to pare back. Yeah, I'd really, really love to uh, to apply for a grant and to be able to put something quite large together. But um, I don't know. We'll wait and see what happens. I guess as the year goes on. But... It sounds good, man. Well, I want to wish you all the best for that. And it sounds like. You've got some really exciting things in the works, and you'll have to keep me posted about that exhibition. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And uh, so I want to say a huge thank you for, first of all, inviting me into your home and just, you know, talking to you about your process. It was really great. Oh, no worries. Thank you. Thanks, okay. for into uh, thanks for coming over. <laughs> that's okay. That's completely fine. And, uh, yeah, so thank you, everyone, to for watching this episode today. Uh, if you want to check out Nathan's work, uh, I'll leave links to it down below. Do you have like Instagram website or, you know? I do. Uh, my Instagram handles are at the art of Nathan Smith. Um, um, but if you want to just see my gallery page, it's at the art of Nathan Smith gallery. That's it. You know. uh, nice and simple. The website is www.theartofnathansmith. So, you know, bit, awesome. of, cut, bit of cut and paste there. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. You've got to keep it simple. That's right. <laughs> That's it. Uh, so, yeah, definitely check out all those links. I'll leave them down below. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode.